My Facebook friend Michelle introduced me to the worry worm and the worry worm poem and asked if I would do a illuminating version. And I found the concept so beautiful that I started working on it the same day. So here's how it works. You get a little card with the worry worm poem and you put the worm and the poem in a little baggie and you give it to someone who really needs it. I created these little tags and when you buy the written pattern, you'll get the tags and the card. But you can make these yourself. Just Google the worry worm poem and you're good. But first, you need to knit your little worry worm. So you're going to need any loom with three pegs, your hook, 12 yards of yarn, two wiggle eyes, embroidery floss, your needle, and scissors. All right, let's get started. We're going to be working with a single strand of worsted weight yarn. And I'm going to secure mine to the anchor peg using a simple knot. You can use a slip knot if that's more comfortable. And we're going to take this working yarn behind peg one. Now you can go in either direction. It has no effect on this project. And we're going to drawstring cast on three pegs. So take the yarn from behind peg one, lay it in front of peg two, put it behind peg three. And now we're going to turn direction because we're knitting flat. And we're going to lay the working yarn over those three pegs. Take your loom hook and you're going to knit off the peg in the middle, which is peg two. That's your drawstring cast on. And now for peg one, I'm sorry, for row one, take the yarn behind peg one because you're going to slip, in other words, skip that peg and then lay it loosely over the next two pegs and knit off peg two and peg three. And that is row one. You're now ready for row two because you're done with your cast on. And so for row two, you're going to turn direction. And again, you're going to slip that first peg, right? That one right here. You slip, in other words, skip that peg. And you're going to knit peg two and peg one. Go ahead and tighten your um, working yarn. And now you're ready for row three. And this one's tricky, so pay attention. You're gonna first turn direction and you're gonna knit that first peg five times. So you're not moving, you're standing still on peg one and you're gonna knit peg one five times. You can knit three if you're uncomfortable with five, that's okay. And then you're going to knit peg two and peg three. And once you've done that, you are done with row three. And what we're going to do from this point on is you're going to repeat rows two and three. Just keep knitting those same two rows. So let's try this again. We're going to slip peg three and then tighten it a little right there and knit off peg two and peg one. Then I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna knit peg one five times. And again, you could do three if you're more comfortable with that. Okay? And then you need to knit off peg two and peg three. So knit those off. Try to keep your stitches tight Okay, so always go back to the working yarn and kind of tighten it a little. And now we're going to turn around. And again, I take that little loop right there and I tighten it up a little so that it, they balance each other out. And then I knit off peg two and peg one. And now we're going to repeat row three again. So we're going to knit that first peg five times. And by the way, excuse all of the uh, little sounds that you'll hear in the background. My kitties are always busy in the background. And so, yeah, I just let them be. So some of you have cats, you get it, right? Or pets or kids for that matter. So yeah, they're noisy. All right, so we are repeating um, this row again where you skip peg three and then knit off the next two pegs. And then 
Don't forget after a few rows to take the knot off the anchor peg because you don't need it after a few rows. Um, your yarn doesn't need to be secured. So you're going to turn around and again knit peg one five times. So you guys get this, right? You get the pattern. You're just repeating those two rows again and again and again. And I thought about counting the rows to tell you how many times to repeat two and three but i found that it was better and less stressful to just count the rings so just keep repeating rows two and three and you'll see that it'll start to take a shape like this and it's not perfectly round at first so what you do is that you pull on the stitches and then with your finger you curl it so that it takes shape it starts to get a little tighter if you just let it be it's not going to perfectly take shape so you're basically just pulling stretching your stitches and then curling the fabric you see this and then you get these rings and what you need to do is just count the rings and there's always one curl or one ring left uh, on the loom basically so you're going to count them and for me i found nine rings was best but you can do as many as you want so when i saw that i had eight i counted eight rings and i know i still have one uh, on the loom then i went to the next step and the next one you will be counting so count your rings make sure you have at least eight and then we're going to start doing the head to knit the head we're going to start our count all over again and we're basically just going to do a slip one knit two for 20 rows you could do more rows or less rows de uh, depending on how large you want the head to be um, i did one with 15 and the rest of them i did with 20. there's not a big difference uh, in the way it looks but i think it'll be easier if you do 20. but what i'm saying is don't get fixated on the amount because there's not that big of a difference and i'm doing the slip one because you want it to um, not look bumpy which is what happens um, when you're doing the head portion with some of the ring section i don't know if that makes sense of the fabric but you're going to basically just do it over and over again just slip one and knit two that's all you have to remember and you know don't stress over the number of rows just get close to you know between 15 and 20 and that's it now we're ready for the cast off but i made a mistake that i didn't want to edit from the video because i want you to see it and that is that this little stitch right here is the first one I moved towards the middle and I don't want you to do that because I will show you what happens I rather that you take the one on this side and start with that one in other words you would move peg three to the middle and knit off and then peg one to the middle and knit off because when I do this and I knit off what happens is that that loop right there that's left it has it's not like a, a slip knot it will not let me tighten up so it stays that way and uh, it doesn't look good when you do that you want to be able to make a knot and tighten that top stitch so that it will like go away so you see here that i'm struggling to get it to tighten up and it's not going to do it you see there and so it stays that way. Now I'm going to have to sew to hide it away. And um, the other thing is to leave yourself a longer tail than I did right here, which is another problem that I do. I tend to um, cut my tails too short. So make sure that you get enough um, of a long tail to be able to sew. So now you wrapped the little head until you form a circle at the top. And then you're going to knit this, I'm sorry, you're going to sew it so it's not open, right? So you took the tip, you rolled it sort of to create a circle for the top of your worm to form that head. And 
you rolling it twice is enough i did three so it became a little bigger that's what i'm saying you could have a smaller like the light green worry worm or this one that's a little the head's a little bigger because i rolled it three times and then there's a little bit of a light sewing that you have to do this is not a biggie you're just trying to go from the um, inside and sew that and then from the outside of the little head towards the middle as you can see uh, is how you make sure that you don't have any opening on uh, on the top head of the little worm all right so no big deal on this sewing I don't think I'm sure you guys can handle this and then just make sure to weave in your end and when you uh, feel comfortable that you have enough this is where I'm telling you you need a long enough tail then you could just get your scissors and cut any excess yarn and as you can see I struggled a bit again because my tail was not long enough and so I kind of have to feed my needle f through first and then thread it over and over again until I've um, till I've done enough for it to look okay then we're ready to add the eyes and I used hot glue for mine and this is a low temperature hot glue and these uh, wiggle eyes are the uh, five millimeter it's five or seven I'm not quite sure they're they're the second to smallest size and this is the one that's usually used uh, but I changed them later on to the 15 millimeter which is bigger and I think looks way cuter and it matches the card all right I also added um, the little antennas but I found that it looked more like, I don't know, like some kind of a bug than a worm. And so I also removed them, but I wanted to show you that you have that option if you wanna add uh, some little antennas. And as you can see, it's basically just uh, a strand of yarn that I tie on the top. So I also think that the little mouth uh, does add, so the bigger eyes and the little mouth uh, were a big addition so you're gonna get your thread your uh, embroidery floss and double it and then you can make a knot uh, on the back you don't have to and I'll show you why you don't have to if you don't want to but um, just if you want to feel a little better and know that your thread is secure you make a knot and then you're going to come from one end and you want to align this with the eyes right so there's your first eye and you're going to go ahead and um, put your first thread in and then come midway so there's your your little knot and it's basically right at the middle of the eyes right there you line it up and you're going to come down because this is a little smile so you want to come downward and then come back up from the other end which is again lined up with the eyes and then you're going to um, make sure that your thread is is lined up correctly because you don't want to be left with some loose uh, some loose loops and then just come back to that middle and there you go there's your smile it's that easy all right now your worry worm has a smile now I did do a little knot on the back of mine uh, with the thread and ignore the glue it's there because I changed again the eyes from really tiny eyes to the bigger 15 millimeter eyes and then you cut off the excess thread and this is what I did to hide it because I don't like that there is I got uh, this little 15 millimeter button and you could sew it on but I just found it easier to just hot glue the button and hide the yucky on the back then all you have to do is print out your tags and you cut them whether you want the tags or the postcard and remember if you buy the written pattern and i'll put a link in the description you could just reprint the reprint these over and over again forever for as many worry worms as you'd like
and I try to price the pattern real low so that you know anybody uh, can get it without uh, a lot of concern because I think that these are super cute and are really a, a good thing to give to someone that needs to brighten their day. All right, guys, that is it. Come back and loom with me. Remember to like and share the video because it helps me a lot.